morning, Sean P. Morning. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's 5.20 in the morning. They got here at 5, I don't know what, probably 5 knowing you. 4.45. 4.45 for real? Yes sir. yes, sir. They got the rig hooked up going, got it fueled up. Obviously, Zach on the camera. But man, I got a great one today. We're, he we're heading to Hayes, Kansas. I don't even know where that is. Well, it's in the middle of nowhere, sir. Um, okay. I love riding with you guys, but sometimes there's a reason why. <laughs> okay. The closest airport is two and a half hours to the middle of nowhere where this is. Which would be another two and a half hours back. An hour for a rental car. A couple of delays, so I might as well grab my cup of joe and go with you guys, right? Alright, so is this a turn and burn? It's a turn and burn, so we're going to run this whole run today. We're doing a hardcore. It's, it's, only, cool. it's only 1140 miles. And we got to get in a killer lunch. 570 up, 570 back. Okay. But it depends on which way we go. I think there's a route that we go 525. Anyway. But it says it's eight hours, 20 minutes to get there. Yeah. I'd like to get there at 720. Uh, you know that the double trailer doesn't do very well with diesel going that fast. But you didn't say no. I didn't say no. It's possible. It's possible. We are chasing one of the rarest and most desirable Shelby Mustangs ever built. Really? Yes. So. Yeah. This year I thought it was going to be the year of the Porsche, but it looks like it's leaning towards the year of rare Mustangs and Shelbys. Love it. So Sean knows a little bit more than you do because we haven't released some of our recent finds, but they're coming soon. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. Nine hours, but we're here. Let's go see what we came to see. 68 GT 500 Shelby Convertible KO. Let's see this thing. <laughs> Sean, you have to stay outside. <laughs> How are you, sir? Oh my God, look at these things. Windy day, windy day in Kansas. Yes. I mean, our truck was just like, we were going sideways. <laughs> Welcome to Kansas. Nice Thank you, sir. Thanks nice to meet us. you, yeah. This is Zach. Hi, Hi. Zach. Nice to meet you. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Yeah, we were, this, we this, were remember, it. we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my attitude coming in the door. So it's been up here for like 10 years? No. Eight? I, uh, it, it I took it out there. once. It was there, and then once it was over there, we've okay. sold some cars like some, see that Boss 9, I sold that. Yep. And then that 67 GTA convertible. Okay. That's a great car too, both of them are. Yeah, they're both strong. I got these two Mustangs left in the Petty's garage in this car. Now that's the red color you want to see instead of the, where it's coated, right? Yeah, Highland Green. Yeah, gotcha. No, it is red underneath. Yeah, the red, yeah, red oxide, that's, that's correct. See, you asked me, I thought it was black. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, here's all the stuff on it right here. Yeah, so it was 11 with track lock. Only one in Canada. Only, yeah. what is there, only 47 with the black top? Uh, 47 in green. Okay. And Highly then green. Then it goes somewhere where it has 11 of them? Yeah, that was for the 350 track lock for okay. the differential for the rear. I don't think you could get a 430 in this car. I think you had to get an R code, a uh, regular Mustang to get that. Yeah, well, that's that black one is the R code. That one's nothing but... So on this car, and see us, it's got that the alloy wheels on it. It's that was a steel wheel hubcap car because the alloy wheels were carrier from '67, and they wouldn't fit over those brakes. Okay. So what could have happened is when it came into Canada, which takes a while for the car to get there, the accessory catalog at very very late '68, like almost at '69, mm -hmm. those wheels were available. Because that's what's on my GTA too, the '67. 
Well, those you could have ordered those in '67, okay. but the '68 Shelby's you couldn't get those wheels. Now that black one, I'm the second owner of it. That's got fifty thousand miles on it. Okay. The old guy had polio, had it, and he drag raced it. Okay. And I've got all the paperwork where he bought it. He traded a '64 and a half for '65. Uh, Mustang for that. '64 and a half would be a crazy rare. Four twenty eight four speed. That's a great yeah. car. Oh, that's really neat. Hold on. Everything. Everything. And you're the second owner? Yeah. So this is really, really early. So 930 68 would be the first month of production for this car. This car was built where I grew up in San Jose, California. Wow. That's why my wife bought this for me. I'll tell you the bad part was this I talked to this guy and he had he had that boss nine and he was okay. taken out to Colorado and uh, he broke down and he said Dave you want to see it anyway so he brought it here and then he said he rented a U-Haul van and put a hitch on it because he dropped two valves in a Chevy pickup. So he had a hard day. Yeah, he had a hard day. He <laughs> asked if I'd store his car for him. He said, unless you'd be interested in buying it. I said, you're not really in a negotiating area right now, are you? <laughs> no, not. Check if you look right here, like Rob just said, this car was a San Jose car. So the way you could tell that is your R was the, obviously was the, the San Jose and R is 428. So this would be considered a double R car. And I'll tell so you what, kind of you should hear that car. Yes, this is all stock. This car, wow. this car is cool. I mean, I'm not saying someone didn't touch up paint or something somewhere. Right. I haven't. I bought it from the old guy. Oh, oh sorry, watch your right. I bet that happens all the time. You used white pen packs. That is beautiful. You can tell us. I mean, this isn't no. It wasn't like a. It's not like my Boss Nine, but it ain't. It ain't beat up. So, you walk up. This is pretty exciting to see this. If you see this oil cooler right here, that's a sign that it's a super cover jet instead of just a cover jet. Very cool. I'm not going to tell you that someone didn't put a cam in it. Sounds like they did. Don't you think? Mm, no, it's super coverage yet. They're pretty okay. lovely. Okay. It's, it's, I don't know. This sounds right to me. Okay. Well, like I said, when I was in the 70s, I have always wanted them, but I couldn't afford them. When I was in the 70s, I was driving this blue pickup. What motors in the team are? Is it single carb or two four or fuel no, injected? Okay. This is a four forty. This I had since I was sixteen. That's why I drove the high school. You remember Sean Highland? No. He builds motors. He's up in Canada. Wow, okay. that's, that's a big boy. Wow, that's an all aluminum Shelby Cobra motor. It's all ported, polished. They even cut the intakes and everything. That is really trick. I can show you pictures of this truck when I was driving when I was 16 with baby wounds on it. I went to the military and left it in my sister's house. She said, you better wow. come get it. That is beautiful. This is just, this is a 49 tank. chopped and everything. They put a step side on it. It's got a 440 wedge in it. Vintage air, power brakes. Very cool. These are, these are so ugly, they're great. Well, I got this. It came with a flatbed, okay. and it was just all rust. 
kind of chopped it. Oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> for 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 a ugly old dog. That's awesome. Yeah, they're ugly about it, sir. I love it. Do you see that paint out in the sun? This Just like this one. This is this is a P P and G. Okay. And it was supposed to be black underlayment. We, we will. I was one of the picks for truck of the year with this at Good Guys. But I Thanks, lost beautiful. to a buddy. I lost to a buddy of mine that lives out in uh, Oregon with the '57. Okay, that paint's killer. Both of them have really good paint. Wow. It's dirty, but beautiful. I was left home when I was 16. I was living up in San Jose, and my dad moved to LA with my mom. And he called me. Said, "Hey, I found a pickup for you. It had 283 in it." And I went down and got it, and I've had it ever since. You say this is, goes 30,000 miles on it? Yeah. 30 or 50. Okay. This got the same motor as the T-Bird. It's got the T-Bird Special 392. Right, with the dress-up kit and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. This is pretty funny color. Being black, lacquer. Black it's tough. straight. It's straight. Power steering, power brakes. That's a good option car. You know what they said? Strange too, because it has it has door lamps. Yeah, it is unusual. They said they usually there's very few of them came with them. This was owned by an old man, and he uh, got married, had a bunch of kids, sold, and the guy drag raced it, and then he found it again. And he started re he started uh, he bought it back. He started restoring it, and got tired, so I'm done. Well, that's a beautiful car. So we finished it. Let's spend a few more minutes to get the Shelby if that's okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I didn't mean to hang No, out. I love all this stuff. I'm in. Is the, would you consider selling the Mach 1 or are you hang on to that? Well, I don't know. It's kind of... If we get this out of the way, drop that. Especially when you try to get heels on. So this exhaust is all date coded correct. I don't know if it's reproduction or NOS, but you can see all the, the marks, date codes and everything on it. It's got the right tips in the back, which these are KR. I like to see these drains in here in the inner drop, trunk drop offs, which is really nice. It's unusual to see that. But you want to look at it. I don't think this is a, was a short mile car. It has a good history, but you can see how these reflectors right here are mounted on the outside of the quarters. The earlier cars were indented. So prior to like these cars, they didn't start making until April. Um, it were generally made the last six months of the year a few were made in April, so it's got the right quarter panels on it. These letters are also different on the 500KR versus the GT350 because they had to add two letters right, and they were too long. <laughs> So they had to shrink them up. And they also, interesting enough, they took the period out of the G and the T. Yeah. Be interesting to see if these are factory Kelsey Hayes wheels or reproduction. But you have to take them off to get the date codes to see. It was like, that's what I liked about the Boss 9. It was real plain Jane, but the 302, the Boss 302 was all, it had all the, all the louvers and everything on it. I know it's not perfect. But it's got good bones. I can get this black one out of here. That'd be great. Okay. But it's actually a good spot right here is to look to see if I can see the inner fenders and stuff. You want me to get this one out of the way? Yes, if you could, that'd be fantastic. So, KR, King of the Road. King of the Road, KR. Which the actual original KR was not the Shelby. It was the R code, the 68 and a half. So Bob Tasco is the name came in with that. And he and Shelby were friends. And I think Carol borrowed it before Bob put it on his car. 
<laughs> so the motors in these cars are the motors that Bob Tasca built in the 67 series when we started racing. Mm -hmm. And we went back to Shelly, or not to Shelly, we went to Ford and ordered 50 Arco drag cars. And they basically, he wanted them to copy his motors, but they improved them. So this motor actually has 30 things improved over your Tasca Ford motor. So this is a 428 Cobra Jet motor, but it's got 427 heads. Um, it was a so design by Bob and Tasca his, and Shelby. He and, put his spin on that. And in the Ford Engineer. So yeah, this is a fantastic motor. It's a light years ahead of just a regular 428. Wow. Light years. Lots of power. This car is kind of a... How many horse? You know, it depends on who you believe, but... They advertise it at four, at 335. Most most people dialed them in at around 435. And wow. some people believe they're as high as closer to 500. Wow, that's a lot. See right here, Sean, when this tag comes through, this VIN tag? Yep. What I want to try to do is get a picture of that and see if I can see the stamp. If we can get our phone right there. If you'll hold that light right there, those yep. two, see where those two ribbons are? You know, these are those sequential taillights like a T-bird. Yep. They got the firecracker stick in it. They go like, yep. Love it. Super cool. You want to back it out? This one? Yeah, sure. I would be honored to. Super Cobra Jet Force Speed Car. It's good. It's good. The antenna, baby. Well, it's not power, is it? There's no power. That car's not made for anything but driving. No, he meant the antenna. The antenna. It's my hip. Okay, well, looks like you hit once before. Okay. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just put it in the angle that it was hit before. Yeah. <laughs> before I came out that this one was not for sale, so let's see how good I am. So, Sean, come here, I'll show you a couple of things. So, you know, obviously this is a nine inch in this, which is fantastic. You know, you've got this casing here, but it's a, it's a nodular nine inch, but also see that snubber on top? Mm -hmm. See how this goes right in the floor? Yeah, it's when you torque it up, it pulls it down, it snubs it. Right. Exactly correct. That's engineering. Uh, what's the nine was here? It had all the stripes on the springs and everything. Yet you could tell on the drive line. Uh huh. You could tell date everything. Well, you know all that. Yep. But I did, and the guy was explaining it to me. I thought it's so cool. I'm gonna chop the exit. Uh, I I think we should go up, Sean. Yeah, so it get the tension. Yeah, get tension out of the cables. So what else is really significant about this car from '65 to '70 when they built the Shelby's? This was really the first production year you could get a Shelby convertible. Yes, there were six built in 66, and there was one built in 67. I wouldn't consider that production. There's about 1,300 of the Shelby convertibles built this year. Roughly 440 GT350s, about 440-ish GT500s, and over 500 of the KR, which is the one to have. That was the top of the year. 
So there was a there was a big pent up demand for a Shelby convertible in '68. So now I heard somewhere Dennis that this was Roy bar is not really actually a roll bar. It was just more for styling. Is that correct? Or is this actual roll bar? That's roll bar. If you reach up here, Sean, see these little loops. You know what that's for? Uh, Tying down your surfboard. <laughs> How cool is that? How cool is that? Very cool. Okay, so the earlier cars, which this is not an early car, but the earlier car, Sean, you know the flashlight? Yeah. Didn't have a red line on the tack. Of course, this one does because you know these cars didn't start build till April. This car, I believe, was built in June, which falls in line of where, where it should be. The Stuart Warner gauges are correct. Texas car, how cool is that? Well, actually, this car was built in San Jose, shipped to Canada, came back to LA, then went to Texas. Huh. So it did. It was delivered in Canada. When we open the hood, there's two things on this car. Well, there's one thing that shouldn't be on it. At least it's not on the build sheet, but looks to me from the pictures was probably dealer installed. These wheels hopefully were dealer installed in Canada. Hopefully they're real, not reproductions. But this car, very, very few of these cars had air conditioning. God, that's a lot of stuff. They shoehorned that in uh, there. It's really, really tough. So this AC, I studied the pictures pretty hard before I came down here. The AC and smog looks really correct. But you know how we've looked at some of the, recently looked at some of the 68 Arco drag cars? Yeah. I'm giving something away, but anyway. <laughs> the shaker, or, or the air cleaner assembly is totally different. Correct. See how this seal goes to the hood? Mm -hmm. And the other one, the, the element is basically one piece. So that would have been an R code, but this is, what, how, this is correct for Shelby. So a lot of the little tough to find parts are, are here. And the other thing is it's 60, which we looked at the 67 drag car extensively and just about figured that out by the way. I'm but, so excited about that. <laughs> the Vintag on the, on, on the 67s were etched, okay? This is reverse bossed, as in stamped from the back. Okay. So you can't reproduce that, so that's, that's a real tag. The other thing is this car, since it was after April, somewhere around that time frame, they changed from Shelby American to Shelby Automotive. Okay. which is correct and also they changed that inside the doors well these say shelby american but these should say shelby automotive so these door sill plates the inserts have been changed not a big deal and then if you look over here sean at this point in time in production only the first 500 cars could have not had tilt a pop so when you see two solenoids here that means your tilt, you, when you tilt your wheel, it goes that way, it makes it easier to get in and out. So this has got a tilt-away wheel. Yeah. So if the door is locked. shut, it won't move then, is what you're saying? It's, if it's not locked into place, it won't start. Right, oh, okay. It's got to be locked in place to start. I couldn't start it, I kept fighting it. So that's two safety that's mechanisms a, they have right That's good trivia. You see, this car is way down the line, 37, 32. So there's a lot of idiosyncrasies in the first 500 cars, but so it's had AC added, which I think it's a plus. It just wasn't a factory AC car. Texas. Had alloy wheels added, which I, again, I think is a plus over having hubcaps. Now, so Rob, this, this rivet right here uh -huh. has been removed before. And the reason why they do this is so you can prove that this car is real. And you can look underneath that it's not, has not been flared. So what I'm gonna do, if it's okay with you, is I'm just gonna simply pull this up a little bit. And we're going to swing that. That way you can see the VIN number. That's fine. That way you know that it's got the real number on it. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. And if you'll see, this is not a double R car. This is a T code car. You know, like the 69 was an R for San Jose. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So the T right here, all the Shelbys this year were built in Matuchin. So if, if you ran up on one and the T wasn't in there, it's not a Shelby. <laughs> Now again, guys, on camera, this car's been apart and you can see that this has been done before, so I'm not doing something that's gonna harm this car. And the rivet's not original right here. 
but it looks like somebody left it loose what, like you're supposed to. It's not going as easy as I'd hoped. It's ready. So I've got six, three, two. The numbers are right. I'm One, eight, three. I don't have any reason to believe that this this car is not correct at all. There we have it. It's got the right number, uh, the right star, the right spacing, the right everything. It's right here. Now this will probably you know if you and you could feel the indentions in it. Sean, feel your finger on it. The indentions all the way down in there. Yeah, so it's, it's it's real. And that is cool. And we did not harm this tag that Nick was already in the tag. No bad gas. What's that? I was smelling the gas. Oh, uh, yeah, it's not bad. The back, this, this here. You hold Each, that up. They told me that there should be a stick with that. Yeah, Is that correct? Um, I think it should just have heavier springs. This looks like something from a staircase. There you go. There you go. That'll work. <laughs> see that on the other side too. We would hope to. Yeah. And then uh, those of you when I was showing the, the tag up in there that would be really perceptive between the numbers in the center where the R would be for the 428 Cobra Jet is not there. That's very common. If you look at these cars and not every one of these have this but the Shelby Sean mm -hmm. will say special performance vehicle. Okay. The majority of them, which is which is neat. And then this DSO right here is extremely long, um, but that was actually the dealership that it came to before it went across the border to Canada. Of course, 76B is convertible, and R color is Highland Green. 6A8 is black. Automatic. The axle ratio, there's not window of room on it, but it's over there on the sheet. I think it's a 350 to 1. Let's look at that real quick. Yeah, it's 350 track lot. And then, yeah, see the, the build? 6 is June. It's nice to have this here. R Highland Green, 6A8 is black. That wasn't R, was it? One of the reasons I'm really confident in this car is this car was in Dallas about 11 years ago and I chased it. But I didn't get to move the tag. <laughs> I didn't get it bought back then. But it's got, a, it's got a good solid history, a known history. 31,115 miles. In the last time that somebody from Shelby looked at this car, this document in there had like 30,800 miles. Really? And they so were it actual. Moved, hasn't moved much. Not at all. And this car was restored when it had right at 30,000 miles. So this car's had 1,000 miles per hour since it was restored. And most of this interior of this car is supposed to be original, which, it, which is pretty amazing. It did a great job of restoring. Yes, yeah, so it has been a part. It has really been, been taken apart and put back together after paint. So I have one complaint with this car. Okay. It's overly restored. I can believe that. <laughs> but I'll take it, we've got a deal. All right. I'm not going to grind you on the price, just well, what we discuss on the phone. Well, I, I, I'll go along with that. Like I said, I had another guy in New Jersey that said if you didn't, weren't going to take it, he'd take it. No, oh, I'm, I'm good. We agreed on the phone. I'm, I'll pay the price. Uh, right. It's a great car. I am fortunate enough that I know the car prior to you owning it. Um, I'm comfortable with it. But it literally is overly restored, but that's how they used to do them. Right. So that's not a problem. We can unrestore, overly restore, but you can't overly restore, unrestored. If that makes sense. Yep. I don't know. Didn't make sense to me. I said it. <laughs> great car, numbers matching, great options. Um, now we're going to arm wrestle over this Black Mach 1 for a minute. We'll be back.
Well, thank you guys for being such great caretakers of that car. Thank you. It's thank awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you, sir. The most uh, under-described car we've looked at in a long time. Cool. Yep. And this car right here is absolutely fantastic. We're going to find a home for that. Cool. If we don't, I, I won't be terrible hurt. You don't seem to be too stressed out at all, sir. I don't get too stressed out. <laughs> I, sold, I sold the boss. It killed me. <laughs> That's tough. So you had a black boss and I that he sold no, us. Oh, it was Red 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 Red. Okay, okay. For some reason I was saying it's black, I think I got that in my head, so it's Clips on Coral Boss Nine. Yeah. We've got one more question for both okay. of y'all. Yeah. Okay. Best place in town to eat. That's well, I've got fun. coupons for McDonald's. No, and for no, <laughs> no. Taco Bell. No. <laughs> we don't have really. There's it's Old Chicago. We don't there's have Applebee's, but there's a, then there's a trio house. A tap, that's Mom and Pop, the tap trio house. That's, we'd like to go to Mom and Pop. Okay. That's what we usually do. Yeah. That's the only place in town that's not a chain. Okay, the trio house. like the Pheasant Run yeah. or the Press. Yeah. Nice it's called a trio, trio house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you guys want to go, it's on me. We don't no, have a big we, we don't have to take your trailer. We could take our, one of our vehicles. Yeah. Oh, man, if you guys want to do that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's back to four. That's what we're here for. Us. Okay, cool. Great cars, good food, and great people. Thank you. Okay. Well, well, cool. We have a yes. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go eat at the trio house. <laughs>
21 and a half hour ride. We did about 1,300 miles, Wiley to Hayes, Kansas. It was a great day. We got to go across America, see all these truckers moving product back and forth. It's amazing how many truck drivers are out there right now, all day, all night. So thank you to you guys. So thank you to the truckers for what you do. We met an incredibly nice couple, Rob and Martha, went to a great restaurant called Trio Craft. I'm not gonna say we rescued because, or saved because they were great caretakers of this outstanding 1968 GT500 KR Shelby convertible with lots of options, one of about 500 built. Great day, huh, Sean? Uh, we're into day two. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. It looks like this year might be the year of the Mustang, might be the year of the Shelby. The Shelby Mustang, of course, one and the same. Or is it going to be the year of the Porsche? Y'all are going to help us with that. Send the lease to social at cbjeep.com. Please like, tag, share, and follow. And most of all, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next week.